Here's another example of the zero product rule. I want to find all solutions to the equation 4x to the fourth power minus 37x squared plus 9 equals zero. Up till now, we've worked mostly with quadratic equations. Here, we're going to have a trick that lets us get around this x to the fourth power. Now, before we get to the trick, let's go through our checklist for solving a quadratic equation. Our first step, okay, we expand each term, push all terms to one side, simplify so that I have a polynomial equal to zero. Okay, and usually it's going to be a quadratic on the left-hand side. Next step, we factor what we have on the left-hand side if possible. Okay, we know, always try to factor out a greatest common factor first. That will make your work easier. If we can factor, then we apply the zero product rule. So that means we're going to take each factor, set it equal to zero, solve, you get a solution. Final step. Since we have an equation to check our work in, we do a check to make sure we haven't made any mistakes. Now, for our trick, okay, we know that this is not a quadratic, but if I let y be equal to x squared, okay, then I'll have y squared is equal to x to the fourth power. I can replace the x to the fourth power and the x squared in the equation to get something entirely in terms of y. Okay, our trick here only works because I have no x cubed and no x. That gives a quadratic 4y squared minus 37y plus 9 is 0. And this I can work with. Now, I want to factor the left-hand side. So I can use the AC method. So if a equals 4, b is minus 37, c is equal to 9. a times c is 36. Okay, it's positive. So the sign pattern for how we split b is plus plus or minus minus. b is negative, so it's minus minus. Now we go through all factors of AC, or 36, try to find the one where if we put the minus signs in, okay, minus, minus goes to minus 37. We hit our answer right off the bat. If I take 1 times 36, I have a minus 1, a minus 36, goes to minus 37. So that tells us how to split B to get our grouping to work. Now I rewrite our quadratic as follows, okay, so we use our split. 4y squared minus y minus 36y plus 9. I apply grouping to the first two terms and the second pair. Now, out of the first two, I could pull out a y, leaving a 4y minus 1. Out of the second two, I could pull out a 9, okay, with a minus sign, leaving a 4y minus 1. Okay, remember, if I factor out a negative, that's going to turn this plus to a minus. Now, the 4y minus 1 matches in both. So I can factor that out, and I'm left with a y minus 9. Now, we don't want to apply the zero product rule yet. What I want to do now is put the x squareds back in. So our equation becomes now x squared minus 9, 4x squared minus 1. And you'll note these are both differences of two squares. So if we factor these one more step, okay, what do I have here? x squared minus 3 squared. Here I have 2x squared minus 1 squared. Rule for difference of two squares just says, okay, I can rewrite that as ax plus b, ax minus b. So for the first one, I have x plus 3x minus 3. For the second one, I have 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. In our equation, we're setting that equal to 0. Now, we can apply the zero product rule to each of these factors. What comes out? We have minus 3, 3 minus a half, and a half. So those are our solutions. Of course, we check our solutions in the original equation. Here, I could check minus 3 and 3 at the same time. I'll use an x squared, x to the fourth power, so minus signs go away. Now, 3 to the fourth power is 81. 3 squared is 9. When I work this out, we get a 0. So these two solutions check. Likewise, I could check minus a half and a half at the same time. The minus sign goes away. A half to the fourth power is 1 16th. A half squared is a quarter. Here, we could put everything over a four. Then we see that this is also going to go to zero. So these two solutions check also.